Good day, my name is Keith McKinnon. I'm here today to talk about Masonic gongs. Now, for many of us, we uh, have heard them at least, uh, and for some of us, we have seen them and we have used them in our lodges for uh, specific degree work. Um, this one here, I believe is set up, uh, it is a custom made piece, so it's been retrofitted. Uh, that from a Masonic gong, which is this, into perhaps a low 12 bell. Now, the Gailey companies made these specifically for Masonic lodges as well as other fraternal organizations that used gongs. Um, now, many people will list on eBay or other sites that it's a Masonic bell uh, or a Masonic low 12 bell. Uh, if you look at old Regalia Company catalogs, they will have them listed as a Masonic gong, G-O-N-G. Um, they had a number of different varieties of these pieces. Um, from the photograph, the piece that is on the metal pedestal with the bell and the marble was probably all one original piece. And it was always a gong, and an individual just had to use a gavel to give the low 12. This piece here, the mechanism, a clock mechanism was probably added at a later date, and from the looks of the studs that are on the board, it probably had some sort of a cover. There are a number of different versions of this. Uh, Masonic gongs were just basically stood on a pedestal. Uh, you had ones that were in a um, regulation box where the bell mechanism was inside of a case and a level was at the top in which the individual would have to push that 12 times to sound the bell. And because it was in a sound box, uh, it made the bell sound much louder. Uh, other gongs were actually a clock mechanism with the bell on the inside. And it was a small cabinet. Um, and by winding the clock mechanism, you could then set the bell to any number of rings from 1 to 12. Um, these were also sold by regalia companies. Um, they were probably from the 1850s until present day. Um, and um, it's something that you don't find much today sold by regalia companies for those that are still available out there. So a lot of the lodges still may have these. Um, you will find them on occasion um, coming up on the market, but also want to point out that not every gong is going to be Masonic. Uh, again, it all goes back to documentation and whether or not your lodge has documentation on the purchase of this piece, or it's been donated, or it was retrofitted, um, will give you a good idea that it is Masonic. Uh, a number of gongs were used in just personal life. Uh, for various purposes, uh, or for churches, or for other groups, uh, as this one here may have been used for the boxing club that was once uh, utilized in this building as well. But pretty much I believe this one here is pure Masonic. Um, and historically it's, it's, I would probably say it's about um, the, between 18. 60 to 1880, maybe a little bit earlier. Um, and it's just a nice piece to have. Uh, even though there's no documentation on it, it brings up one great, great story uh, to tell. And it's a wonderful piece to look at and to learn from. So again, a Masonic gong. And that's about it. Thank you.